periapical cyst is also known as radicular cyst or apical periodontal cyst. It is an odontogenic cyst which is derived from the rests of molasses. Rests of molasses are cells which are normally present in periodontium and are derivatives of Hartwig's epithelial root sheath. These cells proliferate in response to inflammation of pulp. Necrosis of tooth causes activation of rests of molasses, as a result of which they gather around the apex of the tooth. The innermost cells are deprived of nutrition, resulting in the formation of a cyst which is lined by epithelium. Periapical cyst develops at the apex of erupted tooth that has been devitalized by dental caries or trauma. As the carious lesion progresses to the underlying pulp tissue, it leads to inflammation of pulp. If the tooth is left untreated, then pulp becomes devitalized and the products of pulp necrosis exits the tooth into the periodontium, stimulating the rests of molasses. These epithelial cells now surround the apex of the tooth. Due to the progressive growth of epithelial islands, innermost cells are deprived of nutrition and undergo ischemic liquefactive necrosis. Due to necrosis, the central cavity is formed which is surrounded by epithelium. Now as a result of osmotic gradient across the epithelial lining, there is continuous increase in fluid volume and the cyst continues to expand. Most periapical cyst develops at the apex of the tooth adjacent to the pulp canal opening. However, sometimes they also develop at the opening of large accessory canal at the lateral aspect. Such cysts which develop at the lateral aspect are known as lateral periapical cyst. 60% of the periapical cysts are present in maxilla as compared to mandible with the most common tooth being the maxillary lateral incisor. In radiography, it appears as round to oval radiolucency at the apex of the tooth. In case of non-infected, it will have well-defined corticated borders and if infected, the corticated borders will be lost. Now let's move into the histopathology of the cyst. It consists of a fluid-filled cystic cavity. The epithelium is non-keratinized stratified squamous Eosinophilic calcifications, known as Rushton or Highland bodies, are present within the epithelium. Fibrous capsules contain chronic inflammatory cells such as lymphocytes, plasma cells, and macrophages. It also has cholesterol clefts in it. Now to review the histopathology, it has a fluid-filled cavity, epithelium which is stratified squamous having the Rushton bodies, fibrous capsules consisting of inflammatory cells and cholesterol clefts. The treatment of periapical cyst depends upon its size. If it is less than 2 cm, then simple endodontic restoration of the tooth is done. If the cyst is greater than 2 cm and the tooth is to be retained, then endodontic restoration followed by periapical surgery is done. Otherwise, extraction of the tooth followed by enucleation and curettage. A 10 years old boy presented in operative department with broken maxillary lateral incisor. The tooth has grade 2 mobility. Cyst of more than 2 cm is present on the palatal aspect at the apex of tooth. So, the diagnosis is periapical cyst. If you found this video useful, don't forget to like it and subscribe to channel for more updates.